Welcome to Bob Wire Strategy. My name is Admiral Paris, and this part of the show is not, it was not recorded on a camera. This is going to be an audio only, but I have some visuals. I, I will have some visuals. I'm going to have visuals as, as, of as many of the candidates that I'm talking about as possible. So uh, just because you don't see me in live action, the only reason I'm not doing the camera part is because I need to hurry up and get this done. And when I do the whole camera studio thing and I have to, you know, get dressed and I mean, I mean, I'm dressed anyway. I'm dressed right now. I'm not <laughs> sitting around in my underwear but i i have to set everything up the lights the sound the it's just a whole bunch of technical stuff this is part three of my texas elections and this is the main crux of the whole part one two and three the first two parts was my ranting and raving about different things that i like and don't like about politics and the ones the candidates that are running the purpose of this show and the purpose of the whole thing like i was saying is for me to give you my endorsements of which candidates that are running who i am going to personally vote for my family is going to vote for and those in my smoking my cigar smoking group which is we call ourselves the room 404 after the Chicago Blackstone Hotel where Warren Grover Harding was decided upon back in 1920. That was the, you know, you always hear about the smoke filled rooms where decisions are made, where a bunch of guys are sitting around with cigars and there's just a smoke filled room. Okay, that was an actual moment in time, moment in history. And, and what that was was room 404 of the Blackstone Hotel in Chicago. And that's where the Republican National Convention was going on at the time in the summer of, it was in July, I don't have the exact date for you, it was in July of 1920. It was decided in there, it's a very interesting story about how this all took place tonight. It was decided in that room that Warren Harding would become president of the United States. I mean, all of the numbers, all of the guys, they it was all laid out, and they, they made their decision then. Warren Harding was running behind in the electoral vote, in the convention vote. He, he was not getting enough delegates to vote for him, and then it was decided to switch from the general. There was a retired general that was running. It was decided that Harding was going to be president of the United States. Anyway, we call ourselves the Room 404 Club, and we sit around, we smoke cigars, and we talk about Texas politics and national politics and empire politics. And we talk about a lot of negative things about all of the power elites and the globalists in the world. These are my endorsements. This is who I'm going to endorse and vote for and that I can guarantee anywhere from 7 to 10 or 15 votes, depending on how many people I can get to go to the polls. I know for a fact that I can get my own family to go to the polls. In fact, I've arranged that with my kids and my wife, and we all we all go together. We always go together, and we vote, and I give them a list of who to vote for. So I'm going to read you a list of the candidates and the people. I may mispronounce their names, so I guess you just have to deal with that. For the U.S. House of Representative, Representatives District 12, I'm going to vote for Ryan Catala. I feel like Kay Granger has been there long enough. I don't think that you need to be in Congress for 25 years or more. I, I believe that there should be term limits, personally. For governor of Texas, I'm going to vote for Don Hoffines. And for lieutenant governor, I'm going to vote for Daniel Miller. And for attorney general, I'm going to vote for Louis, Louis, Gomer. Uh, Louis Gomer. I really, really, really do like Louis Gomer. Every time I have watched anything that he has said, listened to any of his speeches, the man has never said anything that I disagree with. Louis Gomert. Then let's see, we're going to do Comptroller of Public Accounts, Glenn Hager, a Commissioner of Land Office, Victor Avila, A V I L A, Avila, Avila, I don't know, but I'm going to vote for him. Commissioner of Agriculture, Sid Miller. Railroad Commissioner Wayne's Christian. I believe it's Wayne. It could be Wayne. I, I might have added an S. I mean, Wayne S. Christian. Uh, Justice Supreme Court, place nine, David Sheenick. S C H E N C K. Judge Court of Criminal Appeals, place five, Clint Morgan. State Board of Education, District 11, Joshua Tarbay. State Senate, District 10, Phil King, my good buddy, my former lawyer. He's just a great guy. I can't say enough things about Phil King. You've got to vote for Phil King for Senate. He's going to do some wonderful things for us. District Judge, District 231, Jesse 
Neveras, District Judge, District 371, Ryan Hill, District Judge, District 372, Julie Lugo. Now, I say I don't vote for women, and for the most part, I don't. I'm not going to vote for any women, but I do recommend Julie Lugo if you are going to vote for a woman. She seems to be the most conservative candidate, and the other candidate is a woman as well. So there you go. You got two women running. You might as well go with a conservative one of the two. Criminal District Judge, Court Number 4, Andy Porter. Family District Judge, 323, District 323, Alex Kim. Family District Judge, uh, District 324, here's another one, Elizabeth Rivera. The next one is District 325, Cynthia Terry. So those two have women contenders, and so I would vote. If if you're going to vote for a woman, then vote for both of those if you want to stay on the conservative side. Criminal District Attorney, Phil Sorrells. County Judge Tim O'Hare. Tim O'Hare. I, let me tell you something about Tim O'Hare. Tim O'Hare, his campaign, I'd put in a, um, I think I got a, a text, and it said, if you wanted to sign, then let us know. And so I texted him and said, yes, I want to sign. They immediately texted me back. Well, immediately. It was a few hours. But they texted me back, and they said, do you still need to sign? Well, Okay, it was the next day. <laughs> Sorry. They said, do you still need a sign? Or have you picked one up, whatever campaign office? And I said, no, I haven't gotten one. S- uh, bring one if you can. And they immediately texted. Within the hour, they had a sign in my yard. So Tim O'Hare is going to run for county, is running for county judge. Do not vote for Betsy Price. Anyway, judge county criminal court number five. Chris McGregor, court number six, Randy Martin, uh, I'm sorry, Randy, well, I put Randy Harton, it may have been Martin, I might have mistyped that, but Randy Martin, I believe it is. And then court number nine, Stephen Jumes, J-U-M-E-S, and I know that's correct because I remember going through and pecking out that on the typewriter. And court number 10, Trent Lofton. Now, I went to Washington, D.C. with Trent Lofton in 1992. And his father, if I'm not mistaken, is Jerry Lofton, a very famous divorce attorney here in Fort Worth and defense attorney. I went to to Washington, D.C. in 92 with Jim Wright, in fact. And Trent was in the same class as I was, and he he went on that trip as well, along with, I don't know, there were about 50 other other students that went with us. And then District Clerk Tom Wilder, County Commissioner Precinct 4 is Larry Dale Carpenter. And County Chair, this is the last one I'm going to give you, is Rick Barnes. That's, That's who I'm voting for, is Rick Barnes on the County Chair. Now, so that's my list of everybody that I'm voting for in Tarrant County. Now, of course, all of the there were a lot of single votes. In other words, just one individual running for one office. I'm going to purposely not vote for any of those. I mean, they're going to win anyway because they're the only ones running in the primary. So it's not like I'm risking anything. But th- the main purpose of doing that is to send a message to the party. I don't like it when an office, even if you've got a good man running, an excellent man running, if you've got Harry Truman running, Okay, or Theodore Roosevelt running. He should have a contender. I believe that every office should have at least one contender. I don't like this idea of uh, one individual running for any particular office and that's it. I, I just don't like it. And I will not vote for them in the primary election. And that's just my way of sending a message to the Republican Party to tell them that they ought to get their act together. But anyway, that's my list of all the candidates that we're going to be voting for here in this election in February of 2022 for the primaries, the Republican primaries. Well, that's all I have for you for this show. Sorry, this was just an audio show with some visuals and you didn't get to see me in all my glorious action. This is Admiral Paris for Barbara Strategy. I hope you join me next time, and we may be doing some more stuff out in the wood shop. Now, actually, I, I think coming up in the series here, I've got my number 13 of my grand trophy that I need to finish up, but I promised, and I just, I wanted to get this election thing out first. Anyway, as I say, I'm Admiral Paris, and this is Barbara Strategy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>